Hi, hello there everyone and welcome to a new review on the channel and today we're looking at a brand new book since I have uh, been told that you know people want a bit more book reviews and that is um, the brand new release by Vanishing Inc and um, John Graham and that is Encore the multiple selection act hardback book this is great Honestly, uh, I like this more than I think I should have. It is so, so good. And I cannot wait to tell you more about this because this is relatively new. And I think it is on some people's radars and you may want to learn more about what exactly this book is and what you're getting. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to talk more about it. Let's roll the intro and do a deep dive into Encore. Perfect, so you decide to stick around, which means you want to learn more about Encore. Now, what is Encore? Encore is essentially a seven routine, 18 minute multiple selection act that builds upon each uh, that be, that builds upon each effect in better and better ways. So that's essentially what you're buying here. So a seven routine, 18 minute act with a deck of cards that, um, that, yeah, builds upon each other and it's a multiple selection type effect. So um, I won't be performing the whole 18 minute act, okay? So I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but I will be performing the two starting routines, okay? So the two starting routines that kind of get everything going and I'm going to... Okay, so as I was editing the, the encore performance, I noticed that I missed a card. I completely missed uh, a card and I completely... Uh, forgot about it as the routine went on. So I'm going to refilm this in a quick performance just to give you an idea of how this will work out. So a card is selected by the spectator, remembered and signed by the spectator. It is returned inside of the deck. It is then cut and shuffled inside. So I'm not going to do the full uh, gist of it, but just so you get an idea, you then proceed to tell your spectator that you're going to find their card with just one hand and one cut. With just one hand and one cut one card right here hopefully their card the six of clubs can you place your hand flat for me just hold on to your card they're going to do that okay and then you tell them now we're going to move on to you and then they're going to tell you no that wasn't my card so you tell them it wasn't okay we'll try something else so your card wasn't uh that one okay uh, can you just take your card and place it somewhere inside they're going to place it inside they're going to keep hold they always keep hold of this so you then take the card next to it and you tell them, okay, hopefully now you found your card, the 10 of hearts, was it that? They're gonna say no. You do it again, this time you do it in a spread. They're gonna keep hold of it. They're gonna place the card inside of the spread wherever they place it. You then again, take the card underneath here. The 10 of diamonds, was that your card? No, you then tell them, so it wasn't the 10 of diamonds, it wasn't the other two. What was your card? They're gonna say jack of hearts. And then you tell them, but I didn't tell you I was going to find it with my hand with what I just said one hand and you've been holding with a card with one hand from almost the beginning. What was that? Uh, can you turn it over? And then, of course, is going to be their signed Jack of Hearts in their hand. So that is essentially the first phase of the effect. You then proceed to go a bit bigger. You then introduce two other spectators into the mix. And those two spectators choose two different cards from the deck. And of course, they remember and sign those cards as well. So those cards are remembered and signed and they're returned inside of the deck, completely buried inside. So then you proceed to give everything here a few shuffles and even proceed to give everything a riffle. And you can continue shuffling the cards if you want or giving them cuts, it's up to you. But essentially what you would tell your spectator is that they're going to touch a card from the middle and hopefully find their card. So that's essentially what they're going to do. So you ask the spectator to touch a card in the middle and hopefully find their card. This one right here, you tell them you don't want to change your mind. Are you sure you want this? They're going to say yes. They say, okay, so the four of clubs. Now, clearly this wasn't your card because it would have had your signature on it. But I didn't tell you you're going to touch a card and find your card. I'm going to tell you you're going to touch a card to find your card. Because you touched the four of clubs that's in between 
these two cards. So the Four of Clubs is nested in between those two cards. And can you turn over? So the spectators would turn over their cards and then you would show that, of course, they have found their cards, but you tell them, you remember the Four of Clubs, right? It wasn't your card, but I didn't want to leave the person before out of the loop. So we're going to take the Four of Clubs, flick it and turn it into your sign, Jack of Hearts. So that's essentially the first two phases of the routine. So I hope that performance was fun. It's really hard to perform this type of effect with no one here, but I hope you still enjoy that. And I also want to mention that these are classic routines and maybe a lot of you that watch this are familiar with these routines. They're going to say, oh, this is what we're getting with this book. I'm better than that. No, really listen to this because the structure of how these are put and the way these are put and structured in the whole act. Yes, you may think, oh, these are too easy for me, right? Uh, these are routines are too easy. Do not dismiss this book because of the first two routines that I showed you. There's five more routines in this book. So don't dismiss just that because the start is, oh, oh, those are easy routines, right? That's just the start of it. It gets better as it goes. It builds upon each other. And uh, yeah, so really keep an eye out and listen to what I, I have to say about this because I think you really would like this, right? So having said all that, where do you buy this? How much does it cost and what do you get? So you can pretty much buy this anywhere. It is from Vanishing Inc. Yes, as it, it's said there from Vanishing Inc. But you can buy this also from other magic shops. I brought mine as I buy most, most of my stuff from Alakazam Magic. Discount, uh, discount code down below if ever you want to buy it from there. It costs 35 US dollars, which is around 46, 48 Canadian dollars for this book. And uh, what you are getting is this. So you're getting a hardcover book. It is very, it is printed on beautiful kind of thick paper, right? It is very nice in that regard. And it's beautifully written, everything. And it also has really nice kind of um, drawings in it. It's a very, very good, uh, well-produced book that you are getting with your purchase. So that's what you're getting here, okay? So having said that, I do want to mention a few miscellaneous things before we jump into the rest of the review. First, um, yes, this is a card magic book. It is routines. But I do want to mention that this act is not a definitive act. He mentions that from the get-go that this is how he routines some of his favorite routines into a multiple selection act. So he's telling you that you can use this as a skeleton to build your own, which means that you don't have to do all seven routines. You could literally just do two. You could do three. You could do four. You could just do one. You could also mix them. You don't have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You could do maybe one, three, five, seven, right? You can mix up how these effects work. You also mix the methods. The way that I presented it and the way that I did it is not at all how he teaches you in the book. He has a different method. He has different slides, different moves. He presents those to you in the book, but you don't have to follow them. He even tells you every time he explains a move, he tells you, but of course, that's for me. For you, that may differ because, you know, he uses something in the book to achieve the effect that I'm not particularly a fan of. And he tells you, you know, if you don't like this, use the multitude of the 50 other ways that you can do to achieve the same thing, right? And that's what I did. I don't like to use that principle. I put my own principle and I developed it. So what I'm kind of getting here is that, yes, <clears throat> there's a seven phase uh, full routine, but it doesn't mean you can only perform that and that you're a lot to performing these, right? Maybe if you don't like a routine, replace it with another routine that you know and make the act your own, right? I just wanted to mention that because I think that is where the beauty of this lies because I've read this book and I've internalized the effects and I've internalized the way he structures it, but I'm doing everything completely differently. Yes, the effects are the same, but the way I achieve the effects, the pattern, the way I present it is literally completely different to what's here. So maybe you'd enjoy my performance, but you would enjoy what he presents and you would enjoy the way that you take his presentation and make it your own. So I want you to keep that in mind as we progress in the review. So having said that, what is the difficulty of the material in Encore? So uh, the material in Encore is as the routines progress as well, the routines get a bit more difficult, right? So the more selections are introduced in the mix, the more difficult the routine becomes. But it's, it's from the get-go, it's not a beginner book, right? 
um, it's not a beginner book and I think it's not written as a beginner book. I think it's more intermediate to advanced, right? Because the moves that he teaches you and everything that he teaches you, he doesn't go in extreme depth. So he tells you, right, to do this move, you do this, this, and this, look at the image and you'll accomplish it. He doesn't tell you, for example, right, he doesn't explain it there, but let's say you were to teach the past to someone that you know is a knowledgeable magician. You wouldn't tell him, oh, you put your finger there, you make sure that these fingers cover here, 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 that you angle, that you direct up, you hold it here, right? You wouldn't do that. You tell them, okay, so you would just take the pass. If you need to re refresh, you just do this, you hold the deck like this and you do the move, right? That's how you explain it to a knowledgeable magician. You wouldn't go through all the finger placement, etc. And that's what he's doing here. He's not telling you, and he's not going through baby steps of how to do every move. And as I mentioned, he does tell you a lot of times, if you don't like this, you use your own. So you do need at least a pre-existing knowledge of card moves, card slights, in order to achieve uh, the effects if you want to change them from what he teaches you. So that's good for me because I didn't like a few of his moves, so I replaced them with other moves that I like more, right? So um, it is not a book for beginners. It's more intermediate to advanced, but overall, I would say more intermediate. So if you're a bit proficient with cards, you're not going to have a problem doing um, the whole act here. And even if, if you have a few things that you may have a problem with, you can interchange with other moves that are a bit more easier or other plots that you can do to achieve the same thing in an easier fashion. So it is not a book for beginners, but it is definitely not something that's too, too difficult. So I just wanted to mention that for the difficulty. Moving on now to practicality. Is this practical? And the answer is, oh my God, yes. Um, because everything is a borrowed shuffle deck in use. All you need to perform this, so you can literally perform an 18 to 20 minute routine with a deck that you get from the audience and a Sharpie. That's it. You don't need anything else. Just a deck and a Sharpie. This deck is not even complete. This deck I've used to make things from, I think there's like 48 cards in here. It's not even a complete deck and I could still do uh, what's here. Of course, you would prefer to have a complete deck, but I'm just telling you that, um, you know, practicality wise, it's great. You just need a deck. No gimmicks, nothing, just a deck and a Sharpie, and you're good to go. So that's all you need for practicality. Regarding a table, um, you don't need a table for all of the routines, but you do need a table for some. Uh, because, of course, as you multiply the selections, right, you want to place them on the table like this, right? You want to have a nice display of the cards that were selected. So... Yes, as you continue on, you will need a table. But for example, the two routines that I showed you, you can easily just do that in the hands, right? So you don't need a table for everything, but if you really want to do a full 18 minute act, yes, you do need a table. If you just want to take routines from here and apply them to your walk around set, to your card magic, etc., then you don't need a table, right? For example, if you take the first three routines of the book, you don't need a table and you can literally do like a three to four minute mini card act, mini multiple selection act in like three, four minutes without needing a table to your spectators. So again, the modularity of the effect and the routine that you're getting, you can apply these to your walk around set, to your parlor set, everywhere you want. So you don't really need a table. Angle wise as well, it's typical card magic angle. So you're pretty much covered, but um, of course, if you're doing some breaks and some stuff like that, you don't necessarily want uh, someone completely to the right or left of you, depending if you're right-handed or left-handed. So just typical card magic angles. There's nothing else um, here that you really have to worry about. Angle-wise, reset, there's no reset, right? There's literally no reset. It's a borrowed shuffle deck in use. You don't have to reset anything. Examinability, go ahead, it's just a normal deck. There's no need to be anything here to be examined. There's no gimmicks. So practicality-wise, A1. Moving on out to where to perform. I think I've already hinted this. So if you want to perform the entire act, right, you will need an 18 to 20 minute slot and a table, which means you're going to perform that in a close-up parlor setting, in a close-up card magic show, or on stage with a camera, right? That's where you're going to perform the entire act, or at home, or at a friend's house, or somewhere where you have the possibility to do an 18 minute routine. So that's where you would perform the entire act. However, the routines in the book, uh, if you want to dissect them individually, can be performed anywhere. I think I've already hinted this previously with um, 
you know, the fact that it's a bar deck, you can do some of the routines uh, standing up, some on a table, etc. You can put these wherever you want. You can uh, put them in your walk around set, in your cocktail set, in your parlor set, in your everyday carry set. Essentially, the routines, you can pretty much do them anywhere that you want. But the act in itself would need a specific setting and a table and a mat for you to do it. Okay? So I think that's worth mentioning. But also, do the fact it's 18 to 20 minutes. You're not going to perform impromptu magic to someone for 18, 20 minutes. They're just going to leave. So... Um, yeah, keep that in mind as well. So having said all of this, what are the positives and negatives of Encore? So let's start with the negatives. What are the negatives of Encore? And honestly, it is very hard for me to find uh, some negatives here. I really cannot find any negative uh, here. Maybe the only negative that I have, if I were to stretch the envelope, is that some of the routines are probably routines that you may already know. And uh, you're going to be like, oh, I already know this uh, or I already know this one as well. But you probably didn't know you could link them together and make a set, right? So these are not all of his individual creations. At every start, he tells you where he got the inspiration from, where the routine is from, who the routine is from. He gives you the history, everything that you need to know, the full credit, and then he proceeds, right? So these are not all his routines. These are routines that he adapted in a set. So maybe that's the only negative that you can have for this book, in my opinion. Moving on into the positive, the positives are it's a great act. It's a great act. The explanation and the book are great. It's borrow shuffle deck in use. Even your own deck only needs a deck and a sharpie. It's super practical. It's modular. You have the opportunity to do an entire act. You have the opportunity to do a routine, two routines, three routines, how many you want. You can even just take the effects. Uh, that you learn from here and apply them individually. So, you know, the effect I did at the start where the specter takes the card, places it in, right? That's like a one and a half minute effect that can play on its own. You don't need to follow it up with anything. It's just a great effect in its own, right? So you have that. It's well written. It's just a great book. It's honestly just a great little book of card magic. So uh, that's all I have to say. Would I recommend it? And what would I read out of 10? Would I recommend Encore? My answer is, if you like card magic, yes. I think that, yes, some of these routines you're going to probably already know. And you're going to be like, oh, I already know this. But the act in its entirety is worth the money. It's worth the purchase. And I think just the creativity that this book is going to spark in you into how to chain your own routines together and make your own act from routines that you may have downplayed previously is worth the price of admission. It is great. It is just great. I would recommend this thoroughly if you're a card magician, for sure. I would rate Encore by John Graham a 9.5 on 10. It's a winner. I really like it. I'm super happy with my purchase. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say. So thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. Make sure to leave a comment. I love talking to everyone here. And I'll see everyone in my next review. Bye-bye.